So this video is about nested cross-validation. And as I mentioned earlier, cross-validation has multiple meanings. One meaning is for evaluation purposes, and then another is for tuning parameters. But nested cross-validation actually combines both of those. Um, it evaluates an algorithm in a way that includes the parameter tuning as part of the algorithm. There is an outer loop, which is a standard evaluation loop for an algorithm. And then there's an inner loop that does the parameter tuning. Now, I just want to go over the cross-validation for evaluation purposes um, just before we go and launch into nested cross-validation. So just to remind you, in, when you're doing regular evaluation, then you divide the data into 10 folds um, and then reserve one of them as the test fold and then train the algorithm on nine folds, compute the evaluation measure in the test fold. And then you repeat this 10 times rotating which fold is the test fold. And then in the end, you report the mean and standard deviation of the evaluation measure over those 10 folds. Okay, so now let's talk about the one, now let's, let's add the inner loop to, to see what that is. So remember, you're allowed to do whatever you want on the training set, as long as you don't touch that test set until you evaluate. So let's say that we did an inner loop where we tuned the parameter. And what we found was, and, and that inner loop was only in the training set, okay? We didn't touch the test set. Just in the training set, we had done an inner loop and found that the best k was k equals 100. Okay, so k is the parameter value. So the best k happens to be k equals 100 for this training set and this algorithm. And then we got, and then we take that parameter value right, and train on the whole training set with that parameter value and evaluate on the test set. And we get some value for the testing accuracy, say 87% here. And of course, you got that best value of K from doing internal um, cross-validation inside the training set for tuning that parameter. And then you rotate which folds the test set. And then again, inside the training set, you're going to do an internal loop of uh, choosing the parameter using uh, cross-validation. And here you might find that the best k is 10,000. Now that's different than the k equals 100 we got before, but that's okay because here you had gotten that k from doing internal cross-validation. And it could, you know, it could be that for this particular training set, this value of k is the best. Okay, that, that can happen. So again, you're, you're, considering part of, you're considering the parameter tuning as part of the algorithm here. Okay, so then you, you take your best K, which is 10,000, you train it on the whole training set, and then you evaluate on the test set, and you get some accuracy, say 86%. Okay, and then again, that, that best K came from internal, like cross-validation inside the training set for tuning, for tuning that parameter. Okay, and then you keep doing this over and over again, and maybe on this particular training set, right, um, the other, the fold, all the folds that are not marked test set here, <laughs> those are training folds. And so here you, you found the k equals one, and that's okay, you know, you, you, you found a different k every time. That's all right. Um, and then here, maybe we find that the best k is k equals 100, 100 again. That could happen. You could, you could end up with the same k every time. All right, and so you do this across all of the 10, um, you know, using each of the 10 folds in turn as the test set and doing an internal cross-validation loop on the training set to find the best K um, every time. And now I should mention, and, and, then, and then again, you report, the, um, you report the average and standard deviation of the test accuracy over the 10 test folds. And that value is um, the, uh, the um, evaluation of the algorithm that includes the parameter tuning. Now, I should mention that nested cross-validation, it's a lot of computation. Because if you think about the number of evaluations you have, it's enormous, right? You, you, have, to, um, you have to run the algorithm so many times. So if you think about it, if there's a 10-fold outer loop and say a 9-fold inner loop, and then you have five k parameters. Well, if you multiply all those numbers together, that's a lot of times that you're that you are um, 
you know, running the algorithm. So people do t try to take shortcuts, like they try to reduce the number of, of Ks or they, um, like the number of parameter choices that they could have. So instead of like K equals 1, 10, 100, 1,000, blah, blah, you might only choose three values of the parameter, like 1, 10, 100 or something. And then another thing people might do is reduce the number of um, the number of folds used for the validation. So you might just use um, one, two, three, four, five folds for, for the validation. Um, and that's totally fine. That'll reduce your computation a lot. Or you might reduce the outer loop too. Instead of doing tenfold, um, you could go down to fivefold or threefold. And also, if you have a fairly small training set, if you divide it up into that many folds, or sorry, if your your whole data set, if you divide it up into that many folds, then um, your your training sets get to be kind of small. Or your evaluation sets can be kind of small, and you, the the results don't tend to be trustworthy. So people are are pretty careful about. Um, trying to make sure there's enough data in your test fold, for instance, so that you can get a good evaluation. Okay, so um, yeah, so that's nested cross-validation. It, it has an outer loop, which is the cross-validation for evaluation purposes, and then the inner loop is for parameter tuning, and then um, that's how it works. Oh, I, I should mention, I get a lot a lot of students asking me, what is the final model? They, they say, now that we've gone through this whole procedure and we have done, we've done this whole nested cross-validation procedure, what is the final model we're supposed to use? And the answer to this one um, is that you have to remember in, that cross-validation has multiple meanings. And um, when you ask about what the final model is, what you're really asking is, what's the right parameter, right? What's the right parameter I need to use? Now, remember, nested cross-validation, that's for evaluating an algorithm, including the parameter tuning. But when you say, what's the final model, you're, you're actually just asking a question like, what parameter should I, am I supposed to use to build my final model? So to produce a final model, you have to go back and think about parameter tuning. OK, so um, that's where you have to go back to the lecture about tuning parameters. And so just so you remember, you you either have a test fold or you assume that you'll get a test fold in the future, you'll get some test data in the future, okay? So we're gonna set that aside and not touch it. And then to tune the parameter, you do exactly what we talked about in the earlier lecture. You reserve a validation set from the training set and you train the algorithm on the rest of the training set. For each K, you value it on the validation set. You report, um, you rotate the validation fold and you repeat that, so you do that whole thing. And then um, you would, report the mean of the evaluation measure for each K over the validation folds and choose the best K. And so you would do that on the full training set. That's your best value of K. Take that value of K and then you train on the full training set, training and validation, you train the whole training set with that value of K and that is your final model. And you would use that final model on a test set or in the future on whatever test data you may um, be presented with. Okay, so that's the answer to the, the what is my final model question. Okay, thanks.